Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to be continuing on this week with Brian's favorites. A nice way to celebrate, having done this for 52 weeks now, a full year's worth of content for you guys, and for me as well, I've got to explore a lot of awesome music thanks to all of your suggestions. Phenomenal work from everybody who's ever suggested anything, and this is a little celebration to bring back some of the stuff that I've enjoyed over the year but haven't had a chance to revisit, check out a second time. So today, we're going to be looking at Flesh God Apocalypse. Now, these guys really interested me with the way that they utilized um, orchestral instruments into their composition, not as a way to widen or to, to give their sound a more majestic feel, but actually in true symphonic classical music styling. The, whoever composed the music for this has a knack for writing classical music and just happens to be in a metal band. And I think that combination works very well. Too often we hear strings just added for their flavor, not specifically to um, add any sort of nuance to the music itself. And these guys just did that in spades with what, whatever we checked out last time. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the song. Um, but it definitely had an impact on me. And I think that's what's more important than remembering the song title is uh, the impact that the band had. So let's get this one going. This one happens to be called The Forsaking. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Got to dust off the old vinyl, pop it in there, get some flesh got up in this. The visual framing is phenomenal, knowing what's coming up. Right on cue. Watching that bass string move. That pian- oh man, what song is that? That piano bar is doing a, a little homage to a very popular classical track and it's eluding me right now. For release, is that what it's reminding me of? I think it is.
interesting secondary set of vocals. I really like this part. They ripped out all the metal distortion, but are using the same exact lines and showing how it's still, you know, classically uh, rooted. I like how they line that up. Oh, nice little three field transition there. All right, not, uh, you know, not, unfortunately, it's not what I was expecting. It's not exactly what I loved about the other Flesh God Apocalypse song we checked out. Uh, it does feature some of the strong elements that I enjoyed about them, but it's missing a lot of the technicality that I enjoyed from the last song. However, it replaces that with strong atmosphere and plenty of homage to popular um well to some popular uh classical songs and I, I i dig that i dig that it's to me this song feels like a way of saying hey look yeah we're metal but we have strong classical roots in our music I feel like that's what they're really saying here. There's a lot of really good use of um, layering. There's good use of different sorts of chord progressions, chord characteristics. Um, there is the idea of taking a single riff, which is that piano part, pretty much from beginning to end, uh, and utilizing small variations and it's context around it with the other instruments to keep that idea going all right the song evolves but that single piano line uh, continues on for a vast majority of the song it's always there it's ever present we can see that in uh we can see that in in a few classical tracks as well it's i don't know if it has a proper name for that idea uh, but it's not highly unusual so it probably does have a name. I just, I've never formally heard it referred to as anything. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's these cool little nods to classical music. There is strong classical composition in here, but the majority of the song is done with distortion. It's done with that 
crackly singing. It's it doesn't feel like it has enough pressure behind it to call it a scream or a growl. Um, it's sort of airy, and while I'm sure he's using proper um, diaphragm pressure, it it feels like there's a lack of power in it. I don't know what to call that type of uh, vocal singing, uh, if you want to call it singing. Uh, it's I don't know. Like like I was saying, no, there is the elements of metal music. We have the singing style, we have the distortion, we have the loud loudness of the electronic instruments. Uh, you know, the drum is loud. It has the cornerstones of metal, but there's definitely really strong roots in classical music here. Um, and like I said, I kind of feel like this is sort of a statement. I don't know if that's necessarily what they went for. For all I know, this is their ballad on the album and they just wanted, you know, this is how they would play a ballad. This is less technical, but more emotionally charged, more atmospherically created and produced. Uh, and maybe it's just a coincidence that I'm getting those vibes, but it, it is what it sounds like. Like you have the introduction and obviously the video is kind of showing this off too, where they're, you know, blowing the dust off of an old record and they're doing ballet uh, i'm not too well versed i don't know if this is actually ballet or if it has you know a more specific name but they're doing very pomp style dancing to it and it has this air of i don't know whatever you would call that sort of air of importance that i feel like a lot of uh classical we'll call them snobs might have towards lesser genres such as metal, right? Um, and you know, most metalheads kind of understand that metal owes a lot to both blues and classical. Classical composition and instruments just work so well in metal. I mean, it's not, you, you don't have to go very far on the internet to hear somebody saying that if Beethoven were alive today, he'd be writing metal music. And uh, I, I disagree with that on premise. I don't necessarily think that's true, but I do think that a lot of Beethoven's works, especially more of his core stuff that he did in the middle of his life, a little less or so than some of the stuff he did at the end, it just works with metal music. A lot of the sounds and textures and chords that are used in metal work well against classical music and uh, especially stuff from the Baroque and Renaissance times. It's just a really good marriage. Um, but these guys are kind of, you know, they're kind of saying, hey, look, you know, to you people who put us down, uh, you know, they have, they're, they're, they're utilizing that sort of atmosphere. You have the, the dusting off of the, the record and you have the people dancing to this, you know, beautiful piano part. And it's not just something simple like running up and down uh you know a, a triad or, or an arpeggio or something there's a little bit of texture to it and and some uh like harmonic ideas going on there that you don't always see in metal music when they have pianos there's there's definitely a little bit more nuance to it that comes from understanding classical music um and we go from this and we transition into the metal using those same ideas. We have metal music written as a classical piece. And uh, of course, I mentioned that when all this cut out and we were kind of brought it down to strings and piano, I, I mentioned that they were utilizing a lot of the same melodic lines that they were utilizing right before the cut. It's just we dropped out the distortion. It's like saying, hey, you listen to the song. Uh, and maybe you put it down for, for being metal, for being too loud, for being too distorted. You know, my voice was, was you know, crackly, whatever, <laughs> whatever that singing style is. He's like, okay, let's strip all that out and let's listen to the music. And it's gorgeous. And it fits with classical composition. And it has a very Baroque Renaissance. I mean, there's like a lot of nuances. I should stop saying that. There's a lot of nuance between Baroque and Renaissance. They do have a lot. Of, I'm just going to call it Baroque because I... Th I'm pretty sure this is leaning towards Baroque style writing. Closer to that anyways. It is sort of an amalgamation between the two because that is kind of what we feel, what 
at least what I, when, when people think of classical, in my experience, they're thinking of Bach and Beethoven and Chopin. Chopin. I'm trying to think of his time period. Dude, my music history has gotten rough since I left university. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, it, 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 a lot of what we perceive as classical music is stuff that was written in the Baroque and the Renaissance time periods. They were kind of back to back. And of course, just like with all eras, they kind of meld together in the middle. There is no distinct line. Um, but yeah, so they strip everything back and they're like, see, look, this is good writing. And it's with the instrumentation. It's arranged as you would perceive it. All right, so now we all agree it's good writing. Let's bring that metal back. And then, you know, everything kicks back in. Uh, that's, that's just kind of the narrative I got from it. Not to mention that the video does the same bait and switch where we have, uh, you know, the very pristine, all white, very well uh, dressed, I guess you could say, more standard looking outfits. And, uh, and then the demon dude comes in. I don't know. Demon dude's kind of weird. He, his, his body is sprayed to uh, like a bronzish color. And he's got the lipstick on. There's, there's, there's some makeup going on as well. Um, but definitely less normal and more metal, more of a hardcore look. And then it ends <laughs> with, uh, you know, coughing up blood. A lot of uh, the more hardcore metal stuff has gore in it. Um, as far as visuals, you have stuff like Guar and everything that kind of expanded from them. I know it's kind of a dated reference probably. <laughs> Um, but you know, you have the gore in it and then you have the unsettlingness of the dude, uh, you know, licking the blood and, um, and you know, we have this transition from the proper and pristine into more metal visual, visual, vis visuals. <laughs> Don't know why I couldn't say that. So that's, I mean, that's what I'm getting out of it. And I think it's an interesting idea to take. Um, coming from that perspective, I really enjoy it. Like I said, they're texturing, they're layering. Uh, some of the compositional ideas that they're doing are, I mean, it, it works well. Like I said, when we cut it all out and we have more of a, an orchestral um, breakdown with the strings and the piano, um, it, it sounds beautiful, really. I would love to get into this. Uh, I've mentioned before that specific chord names and properties is something that I don't really have an ear for. I don't have perfect pitch. I can feel the emotions, of course. I can feel how the emotions tell the story in the progression uh, and stuff like that. But I don't really have an ear to say, oh, they were using, you know, a Dorian mode and then transitioned into Mixolydian. And because of that, you know, this happened. Like, I don't have an ear to hear that. I need sheet music to, you know, see those relationships visually. Um, but... You know, what I heard is a very metal texture with classical composition under it, with interesting, I, wanna, I don't want to say interesting, interesting for metal, I think, but I think that kind of downplays metal. I think there's a lot of interesting chord stuff happening in metal anyways, uh, but maybe unusual for metal, chord stuff that's, that's unusual for metal, and I, it just sounds so good paired with that distortion. I'm still not too keen on the vocal style. Um, it's just something that's, you know, it's got to grow on you. It's, it's, it's an acquired taste, so to speak. I don't know if you can hear that, but this dude's revving his engine real hard out there. <laughs> no idea why. Uh, maybe he's getting amped for another Flesh God Apocalypse song. Um, that was bad. Uh, dad joke. All right, so. That's pretty much what I have to say about it, though. I really enjoy a lot of the composition going on, um, but I kind of wish there were more. I like more technicality in them, and they really brought that technicality to the table last time. I know they can do it. I know they got it in them. Um, their layering is phenomenal, even better than what was on display here, if I remember correctly. And that's just kind of more of what I wanted. Now, as usual, this is... A lot to do with headspace coming into a song. I'm a little disappointed with it because I was expecting something totally different. Okay, that 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 can happen on first listens. 
now that I know what it is coming in again, maybe if I check out the album and I'm like, oh, okay, the more ballad -y thing is coming up and I can be in the right headspace for that and meet it on its own terms, I might enjoy it more. All right. And definitely there's a lot going on in the textural layering as far as the chords are going and all the instruments. And I mean, they do a phenomenal job making sure that all these instruments can come into play and create that atmosphere without anybody stepping on each other's toes. And that is just amazing that they can do that so effortlessly so often right i've only listened to two songs but i can't imagine that most of their discography is like this um so i'm not putting down the song at all and i'm sure there's a lot of nuance i missed especially since i did have a music video stealing my attention occasionally i've mentioned before i, I think a lot of people do it when you're just listening to the music it's a lot easier to pay attention to the music but when you have a visual thing at least for me my attention gets stolen Every once in a while, I, you know, I'm looking at him like, oh, wait, dude, you got to be listening to music. You got to drop an analysis soon. I'm like, all right, I'll look away. But, you know, it sucks you back and you're like, what's going on in the video? So, yeah, there's definitely some nuance I missed in it. And I wasn't in the right headspace for it. So, yeah, that's a little unfortunate. But like I said, I do appreciate what's going on. And I look forward to, again, checking out more Flesh God Apocalypse in the future. Hopefully something a little more technical. That's my thoughts on these guys, though. This is where you get to come in. Let me know what you thought. Hit me up in the comments. If you think my analysis is right, maybe they have put out an interview. And maybe I'm spot on. Maybe I'm way off. Maybe they had no intentions of doing this little bait and switch. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, if you have any information about this uh, specific song, let me know about it. Any recommendations for tracks I should check out next? Like I said, specifically, I'm looking for something a little more on the technical side. I don't necessarily need the speed aspect. Just the writing needs a little bit more mechanical oomph to it, I think. Even a little bit more compositional oomph. This one kind of only had like two states to it. And uh, it was really good at creating that atmosphere. But it was also six minutes of like two ideas kind of bouncing back and forth. So... I, I, I kind of need just a little bit more movement as far as that's concerned. If you know anything that fits that bill, drop it in the comments. There's also a description box above that if you'd like to check out any adjacent links. Maybe you want to check out, check out videos that YouTube has blocked. I got a list there of all of them. You can go watch them. Uh, if you watched the Devin Townsend one this weekend and you, I mentioned that we checked out Deadhead and you can't find it, that's because it was blocked, man. Hit up that link in the description. Uh, there's also a link to the Patreon if you'd like to join the Discord community and vote on future bands and themes. That's the way to go about doing that. It's only $1 per month, which is a pretty good deal, in my opinion. I'm a little biased. I made the deal, but I still think it's pretty good, right? A dollar a month. Um, yeah, so that wraps this one up. Oh, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I kind of hate pushing that, but I got to, right? It's stupid, but it drives more subscribes. And that helps me get boosted in the algorithm and then more people can see the stuff. And I mean, that's what I'm here for, right? You guys let me know about music. I let you guys know about music. And it's like a way for your voices to be amplified on a larger platform to get some of these cool bands out there so other people can know. You hit up the, the comments in any of these videos and you'll find at least one person who's like oh yeah that's another band that's on my wish list or i just picked this up never heard of them before like that's what we're here for to spread the good word of music i think i'm starting to sound like a church <laughs> all right uh, i'll be back tomorrow 5 p.m eastern standard time 10 p.m utc with the start of the random selected songs from this week tomorrow I think is the random song from the more popular of the votes. Thursday will be the random song from the lower end of the votes. And Friday will be my personal pick, which I am greatly excited for. It's kind of a cheat. We haven't checked out the band before, but we've checked out a band with all of the band members in it. They just have a different name now. So I'm pretty excited about that one. Uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be good. That's going to be good. All right, so until then, though, you guys have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening. I can't even do my sign-off. Until then, you guys stay safe out there. Have a fantastic... Until then, you guys stay safe out there. Keep being awesome. And have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose...
to watch my videos. Golly, why couldn't I get that out? <laughs> <laughs>